It's election day 2012 and we stopped by Hornet Park Community Center to see how the voting has been going. The Hornet Park Community Center opened at 6 a.m. on election day for Beach Grove residents to start casting their votes for who they would like to take political office in 2012. Michael Elder, the Republican precinct committeeman, says things got off to a great start. Yes, uh, we opened at 6 a.m. Uh, they'll close at 6 p.m. And as long as they're in the line, uh, they'll be allowed to vote even if it's after 6. So far, Elder says there has been no major problems. No, everything's been smooth at our precinct uh, here this year. Finally, Elder describes what happens with the ballots once the polls have closed at 6 p.m. Well, they're, they're put into the ballot box here. Uh, they're, they're counted. There's an inspector, uh, that's two judges and two clerks, and they uh, look at the ballots afterwards. They're sealed up and they're taken down to the city county building. Uh, and then they're eventually taken to an elect another place uh, in the city, and they actually recount all the votes to make sure. It's been pretty. It's been really well. Uh, it's a presidential year. Those are usually higher uh, percentage-wise than most. Uh, I mean, I'm hoping for a 50% turnout. It should be better, but uh, we'll settle for that. I'm Michaela Ward reporting from the Hornet Park Community Center. Election Day, there are dozens of polling places scattered throughout Marion County. It's all under the watchful eye of Marion County Clerk Beth White. We have 600 precincts in Marion County and there are about 300 polling locations. That's because we co-locate many of our precincts in the same location. Um, for instance, down in Beach Grove, um, Hornet Park I think has two. Um, I think the middle school has some as well. So that's the way we do it and it's, uh, it works out pretty well for us. But 600 precincts is a lot of precincts. Um, we have about 3,000 poll workers all together. Here at the Marion County Clerk Office, there are 30 individuals who are working for a hotline that is available for any poll workers or voters who may need help placing their ballots for the votes. Even though the weather wasn't as so rainy or snowy as it usually is, it's still fairly chilly outside, but that didn't deter any of the employees or the voters to coming out early and arriving on time to place their votes. Yeah, I've talked to numerous people around our community who said that they went first thing and they waited in line, um, in pretty long lines. We heard a report that at Lutheran High School, which is down in Franklin Township, we had about 100 people in line at 6 a.m. That's a lot of people. Reporting from the Marion County Clerk's Office, I'm Jacoby Carr. On November 6th, voters hit the polls to decide who will take office. Barack Obama is representing the Democratic Party for this year's elections. Democrats hope the president wins a second term and are pulling out all the stops to make that happen. Scott Carr, Andre Carson's campaign manager, has this to say on how Democrats are trying to get the people to come out and vote for their party. Well, we have 337 uh, cell phones and phone lines that we're using in Marion County. Uh, so you, we try to fill those with full day and half day volunteers. Uh, so we have anywhere from a minimum of 337 all the way up to 700-ish phone bankers. On top of that, we have team captains. Our team cap, there are 57 team captains who are running around the county, uh, and they are going into polling sites. They are making sure that voters are voting. They are doing that. And then if you add in all the clerks who participate in our program as well, uh, you're looking at well over 1,000 voters, probably close to 1,500 voters that are working to move undecided and ID'd voters to the polls on Election Day. Scott Carr discussed with us how costly it was to run this campaign. I'm actually with Congressman Carson, and Congressman Carson does represent the city of Beach Grove. Uh, our campaign raised over $700,000. Uh, we spent uh, just under a couple hundred thousand dollars on TV. That includes network TV and cable. We then spend uh, roughly around $25,000 on radio uh, and mail, uh, paid phone calls, literature, and other materials like that. Reporting from the Democratic headquarters, this is Mara Manners. Kyle Walker is chairman of the Marion County Republican Committee. He took a few moments out of his busy schedule to do an interview to tell us about this year's Republican campaign. In terms of getting people registered and motivated and uh, to the polls, we have thousands of folks. We both spend a lot of time um, courting the, the undecided voters and the independent voters and uh, uh, in, in attempts to get them to the poll and to vote for our candidates. It, it's really provided a good opportunity for a, a dialogue between county party organizations and candidates and the actual voters and supporters. 
the most important thing for a new voter is to become educated uh, and become educated on issues that, that actually affect you and that, that are actually important to you. Voting can, can oftentimes be an emotional decision for folk, but the, the educated voter will look at issues like, you know, for instance, if I were 18 years old today, I would be very troubled with the amount of national debt that the federal government has incurred. Uh, $16 trillion in debt that 18 year olds will be expected to pay back. Those are the kinds of things that they need to educate themselves on before they make a decision for who's gonna be the president and lead our country for the next four years. So they need to, to educate themselves and uh, vote accordingly to that. Today we took a moment to talk to Chris Prophet about the media coverage on the campaign trail. I think, uh, you know, again, before it was you get your name in the newspaper, your stories, your your campaign is covered in the newspaper, it's covered on TV, or it's covered on, on the radio. Now they have entire campaigns devoted to just social media, to making sure that those messages get out. And if you think about how social media was used in, in just a dramatic fashion and very effective, go back to 2008 when President Obama was able, his campaign was able to engage students around the country and how did they do it? They did it through social media and it was an amazing effort and a lot of I think a lot of Republicans looked at it and never really thought the full impact of social media at the time and that what it would have on a presidential campaign now they all do it. Reporting downtown from Beach Grove City School News I'm Katie Lambert. There are three high-profile races going on this election year. Of course, the race for White House, for Governor of Indiana, and the U.S. Senate. At the Marion County Republican Party headquarters, Executive Director Kyle Walker says the GOP should fare well in all three races. You know, you never, you, it's why we do election day. I mean, I think we're doing very well um, in all three races. And, um, you know, there's, there's very little doubt that... Uh, that the Republicans are energized, and so, you know, we'll we'll know in less than 12 hours uh, on on at least a couple of those, and hopefully we'll know tonight about the presidential race. But if not, we'll know very soon. It, I do think it will be very close. This year's senatorial race in the state of Indiana between Republican Richard Murdoch and Democrat Joe Donnelly has been hotly contested. We asked the leader of the Republican Party in Mary County, Kyle Walker, to talk about Richard Murdoch's quote on abortion. Well, I mean, I think today will tell. Uh, you know, there, there's certain folks that um, certainly took great offense to those comments and uh, others that were energized um, by the, the actual comments, not the spin that the Democrats and, the, and the, many of the folks in the media put on it afterwards. But, you know, that's why we have elections. We'll find out tonight. When speaking on Hurricane Sandy and how it would affect voter turnout and the race, this is what Walker had to say. I've heard... Uh, I've only seen what I've read on, on news accounts, and uh, from what I've seen, uh, it appears that most areas that were affected by, by Sandy um, have contingency plans in place that they've, that they've uh, successfully found ways to make sure that folks are going to vote or have the ability to vote. Um, in terms of turnout, again, I think we'll see today, you know, how, what the effect of those storms uh, really are, but, you know, when you have a tropical storm or a hurricane or a super storm like this, right, I mean, it affects Republicans and Democrats alike. And so, uh, you know, certainly uh, our our prayers go out to those those folks that are still dealing with that well for a long time. Reporting from downtown Indianapolis, I'm Pete Piazza. Election day is a busy day for candidates and as well for the media. We're here at Channel 6 News talking to Chris Prophet about their election day coverage. How many hours of coverage did you guys get for the election today? Uh, we are actually going to do, I think, we'll, we'll do two and a half hours that we did this morning and then cut-ins during Good Morning America. So that's two and a half, two hours and 45 minutes, half an hour at noon. So we're up to 3.15. We'll do five plus hours. It's going to be more than that because on our digital cable channel 6.2, they'll be, an, they're just going to be continuous. So it's, it's several hours of continuous coverage today. And about how many people have been involved with getting coverage for the election? Oh, uh, 60 probably. I mean, it's, it's a group effort. I mean, everybody in the newsroom 
including our weather people. They were out today uh, from polling places talking about the weather, on, which is important on an election day. I mean, if it's raining or if the weather's terrible, you know, you, you'll see those numbers reflected in the polls. But um, it's, it's a tremendous effort. You have photographers and producers and uh, people who edit. We don't even use tape anymore, but people who do the editing. Um, and it's just, it's a lot. It's a lot of people. How do you think social networking has affected the election? I think it has a tremendous impact on the election. If you're hooked up with Facebook or you're on Twitter, look around and see what, the re what people are talking about. What do you think they're talking about? They're talking about the election, aren't they? Because it impacts all of us. And not only you're getting a view from where you live about the local races that are important, but you're also getting sort of the nationwide view. And in some cases, you're getting the view uh, outside of the United States and what people think about these, these elections. So I think it's really changed the game. As much as we devote to the on-air time, we devote just as much time to Facebook and Twitter and all of the media platforms, including our apps. Has there been any obstacles in covering the election? You know, I think the, the obstacles is cutting through at, at, at every election. It's not access because the candidates want to be on TV. But TV is, that's where people get their information. They still do, despite the changing media landscape. They still get it. I think the real challenge um, anymore is, is to get people to cut through all of the negative campaigning and to, to stick with the issues and that's tough it's tough to get somebody who who will break off their platform and speak to people to speak to the voters directly instead of instead of using this sort of well you know we've all seen it the attack ads and I think mm -hmm. people are tired of that that's the real challenge is to get that real message mm -hmm. out to people mm -hmm. and it always has been and it always will be mm -hmm. Reporting from the Channel 6 News Studios in downtown Indianapolis, I'm Michelle Chapman.